Okay, um, I'm not sure where the best place for me to stand is. I think I'm going to go down here. First of all, thank you guys for, uh, for having me and for, for uh, putting me on this, this terrific uh, event in downtown Silver Spring, District 20, the great District 20. Uh, I represent the 19th District along with uh, Delegate Ben Kramer, uh, two of our other colleagues not be with us tonight, but uh, we send regards on behalf of them. Uh, it is truly really an honor to be here. Uh, you all sent me to the State Senate last year, this time last year, uh, and uh, as State would have it, I ended up on the Budget Committee, um, and so I, I promised at that time that I would give you, you know, the honest, skinny lowdown of what's going on behind the scenes, behind the curtain. Uh, in terms of our state budget, which is so integrally related to the federal budget, which Congressman uh, Congresswoman uh, Edwards will talk about uh, as soon as she arrives from voting. Uh, but uh, so I prepared about a 10-minute PowerPoint presentation. Please pay attention. The, the, the stuff you're about to see is really what's going on, and it's the tough decisions that we have to make, uh, and there are choices. And all of you are here because uh, you've made a choice to be uh, active in uh, the decisions that we make as elected officials on your behalf. And so I want you to know what we're looking at from the perspective of a progressive in the bowels of the Senate Budget Committee. I also serve as one of four members of the Health and Human Services Subcommittee, which deals with every cent of Medicaid uh, funding in the state of Maryland. Uh, in my estimation, you know, of, of the vast majority of things that we love and care about and that are dear to our heart and that make this state what it is, the thing that I least want to cut is Medicaid because of the safety net services that it provides for so many uh, uh, Marylanders. So the options, the options at the end of this PowerPoint uh, 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 presentation will lay out several ways out of this thing, some alternatives to those kind of cuts, which are, are um, in, in a very real way uh, in, before us in the next few months. So let's begin. Taking back the state budget from the state perspective. So this is our beautiful state, Maryland. Aerial satellite photograph. Can the lights go down a little bit? You know, there's there's this thing here this guy showed me before. I don't know how it works. I don't know. This could this could shut down the Petco grid. <laughs> Is that okay? Better, better. I can turn them all off, but... Okay. How about that? So, um, Maryland's been described as America in miniature. What, what, what that means is that we are an extremely diverse state ethnically, ge geographically, in terms of our demographics, in terms of the industries that do business here. Uh, we're about the size of Belgium, which has universal health care. We're the wealthiest state in the nation per capita. We've got the best K-12 schools in the nation. We're number two in college and advanced degrees. We've got relatively low unemployment due to our proximity to and relationship with the federal government. We've got the lowest poverty rate in the nation, number two in science and technology, workforce, and number five in technological concentration and innovation. So we're doing pretty well. Our gross domestic product is about $400 billion. That's, uh, that ranks 13th in the nation. It is about the GDP of the United Arab Emirates. Uh, and in terms of personal GDP, it's about that of Sweden and of the Netherlands. By the way, all three of those uh, nations have universal health care, although I, I, I will not speak for the United Arab Emirates, which is uh, um, uh, not something that's been very well up. Um, the, uh, this is our beautiful Chesapeake Bay. Uh, it's the crown jewel of Maryland. 
4,000 miles of shoreline. It supports a, a number of industries, fishing, agriculture, boat, boating, tourism, and shipping. Uh, our bay cleanup efforts uh, in the next six years will total about $11 billion, federal and state dollars. It's a huge amount of money, but it is our number one natural resource, uh, one of the greatest natural resources in the nation, uh, and that's money well spent. Our key industries and employers, we're a service-based economy, about 82%. Manufacturing, which has really gone away in the last you know, uh, 50 years, about 9%. Construction, 7%. And agriculture, believe it or not, is 2%, although we are an agricultural state. So here's what the money looks like. We're spending about 2% on environmental programs, 7%. 7% on uh, government, 6% on public safety, 9% on transportation, higher ed is 15%, K-12 is about $7 billion, health and human services about 37%, about $12, $13 billion, and debt service, pay close attention to that, is now over a billion dollars a year, it's 3%, and our total annual budget is over $34 billion a year. Indicators of fiscal health. Uh, we're one in six states with a AAA bond rating. We still have that. Uh, we've got about $43 million in the general fund uh, left over from 2011. We've got 5% of our uh, budget in the rainy day fund, about $680 million. That, those are some of the indicators that rating agencies look at when they're determining how to rate your bonds, uh, but not all of them. <laughs> Okay, so we're good. How did we get here? Let's go back to the slide. This is uh, the revenue that the state takes in, generally speaking. Higher ed takes in about 10%. Federal government about 27%. That's actually a little high. Special funds about 19%. And then uh, general revenues uh, about 43%. Pay close attention to that red uh, uh, text right there. The general fund. The general fund is a, a uh, pot of money where most pro programmatic dollars come in and out of. They're fungible, uh, they can be moved around. Uh, most programs are funded through the general fund. Special funds, the, the next bullet down, um, are dedicated for a specific purpose. Higher ed and transportation account for most of them. And federal funds uh, from our federal government uh, are for specific purposes as well, please note that they make up more than a quarter of the state's funds. The sources of general funds, again, the, the pot of money, that fungible pot of money called the general fund, 3% in transfers, sales tax about 26%, other 18, lottery 4%, corporate tax 4%, personal income tax 45%. The general fund uh, is about close to $14 billion. Indicators of fiscal strain. Here's where it gets a little bit weird. Debt. And you may have heard during the, uh, the, the standard and poor's downgrade of the United States economy that Maryland would be next if, the, if, if uh, the U.S. was downgraded. That's still sort of up in the air. But what the rating agencies are looking at is our total liabilities, what we owe and what we have in terms of assets. Our debt is like a credit card, and it's maxed out. We have a sort of discretionary cap, which the rating agencies like. We say that basically, in terms of total debt, it has to be less than 4% of the average personal income. And in terms of service on debt, which, which I spoke about a minute ago, it has to be less than 8% uh, of income. By 2016, at this rate, we're going to hit the debt limit and something's going to have to be done. It's just a couple of years from now. Um, our debt service is about $846 million, and the debt limit is $1,252, $1.2 billion. Uh, and again, we're going to hit that in 2014, 2015 at the, at the current rate. So without raising the state's debt uh, or without new revenues, some very tough choices are going to have to be made. And let me just say something um, um, uh, about uh, Governor O'Malley. You know, 
I had a little bit of a different perspective about how uh, the state budget worked until I served on the committee. And I've watched the decisions that he's made over the, over the last year. The cuts that we've made, the, the, the shifting of funds in the general fund, the sort of um, shell game that you hear about a lot from Republicans and teabaggers, Many, much of that was done this year, but it was done to avert drastic cuts to services and safety net programs that help people. Um, so, you know, this is a very difficult time that we're in right now. Tough decisions have to be made. Budget is like making sausage, and that's what I saw firsthand. But the vast majority of those decisions that you hear so much about were done in, in, in the name of providing safety net services and maintaining the wonderful services that, that we've come to know and love in the state of Maryland. So my hat's off to the governor. Here's where we run into trouble. A top line, the blue one, is uh, spending. The bottom sort of broken line is revenue. You can see that there's, and this is last year's chart, you can see that there's uh, about a $2 billion differential between those two. The Spending Affordability Committee is a committee that tells us how much we've got and how much we can spend based on that. They determined that we've got a $2 billion structural budget deficit. That means we're spending $2 billion more than we're taking in and then we have to reduce it within three years or else all hell will break loose, not the least of which being our bond rate. Last year we cut $900 million out of that $2 billion. We left $1.1 billion uh, to be taken care of over the next two years. For those of you who came to Annapolis and wrote and got the emails and everything like that, you know how hard those decisions were. They were um, excruciating. For, for, for those of us who got into public office uh, to provide more services and more health care uh, and better education. Uh, they were just absolutely um, uh, the, the most difficult decisions I've had to make since I've been in this business. But we're not done. Here's what is left to do, uh, uh, 1.1 billion. And here's where it gets choppy. That's the floor of the U.S. Senate. That was the debt limit vote uh, several weeks ago. 25% of our dollars in the state that provide education and health care and uh, safety net programs, transportation, human resources, come from the federal government, more than $9 billion a year. There is a super committee, you all know about that, uh, that's been impaneled with our congressman, the great Chris Van Hollen, uh, thank God he's on that committee because he, he shares our values. But they're, uh, in the next couple of months, tasked with having to make some very difficult decisions. And it's anticipated that states are going to feel the blunt of that, uh, those, those cuts. Um, and, but I want to show you what that looks like. 